Now we're moving on to the external interfaces subsystem. Uh, we're going to cover control panel and trackball. The touch panel, that's really the top portion of the control panel, just has a digital uh, screen that is uh, touch sensitive. Uh, the keyboard, the monitor, and the external I.O. We now have the, the control panel and, and trackball. Uh, we're going to start the video here. Uh, common faults, sticky buttons anywhere in the control panel, buttons not responding, slide pots not responding correctly, uh, trackball isn't moving correctly with your mouse cursor on, uh, on the screen, uh, and specific errors, uh, communication errors that the control panel will you know, experience is error 1223 and error 1224 that will show up on the monitor as, as a fault. So we're going to start with the screws in the perimeter of the underside of the control panel. Now you've released the control panel from underneath. You can remove all the cables. There's a clip on that last cable there. And then you have your video output to your touch panel. And that's how you remove the control panel. Simply reverse the process to install it. Here's how we uh, clean a trackball, just kind of for some PM purposes, counterclockwise on the silver bezel, like many other machines out there. We use a trick, we use some tape to get that ball, to get some grip on it, get it sticky so it comes out. And then to the top right, you can see that just cleaning those ball bearings in there will really help keep that trackball, hopefully moving around smoothly for the user. So here we're going to show you how to remove the trackball assembly. Obviously the control panel is off, removing these two ribbon cables. And there's uh, you know, a lot of screws that we're pointing out here. And you know, we're going to go ahead and remove those to where that entire assembly, uh, that is you know, kind of the trackball assembly and the buttons, will be removed because sometimes those buttons get sticky, they don't work anymore, you know, the trackball itself is skipping all over the place even after you cleaned it. Uh, so a variety of reasons, uh, some gel gets in there possibly. But, you know, uh, just be careful uh, in this area. Uh, the plastic here uh, can be brittle at times. So, you know, you notice that we're actually using a manual uh, a Torx screwdriver uh, to make sure that you know we're being as careful as we can to not cause any damage in this area. And it looks like we're almost done. And now the unit should just lift right off. Following up with the control panel, we're gonna look at the touch panel. And with the touch panel, no video display on the touch panel itself or no response to touch. Uh, maybe there's some artifacting on the touch panel itself. But, you know, a very similar process. We need to get to the control panel and remove that and removing the touch panel assembly from the control panel. So, you know, same process here. We're going to go for the perimeter screws. Ignore the other screws because that's for, for the keyboard. You do not need to remove all of them. Uh, we just want to show you what's absolutely necessary uh, to, to get to the parts that you need without removing excessive hardware to get there because, you know, your, your jobs are already hard enough to, to work on a variety uh, of equipment that, that's very sophisticated. 
So we're going to continue to remove all these perimeter screws to release the control panel. Again, we need to remove these cables to separate the control panel from the unit. Now we're going to remove all of the you know, potentiometer caps and all, all the plastic cosmetic caps uh, to, to get access uh, to remove the touch screen itself. So we're pointing out the screws that you will need to remove to remove the bottom plastic cover to get access to the screws that are holding the touch panel to the control panel. Now it's time to remove the bottom plastic. We have a ground cable. Going to remove that screw. USB connection. Power. Flip it around. And these screws are pretty obvious that these are the ones that are actually holding the touch panel to the control panel itself. careful when you flip it over the touch panel is loose pull it out and those cables you disconnected are going to slide right up and that's how you remove the touch panel go ahead and reverse that process to install it but pretty straightforward just a lot of screws and a lot of patience on this one so we have the keyboard here. This is the QWERTY keyboard with all the alphanumeric characters that a sonographer would use to enter information in the machine uh, that are alphanumeric. And we're gonna take you through the process here. It slides out. And typically when these are failing, sticky buttons, buttons not responding, maybe a little bit rough usage on the machine, some keys are actually missing. We've seen that fairly often. So we're gonna go underneath and where the rails are, we're gonna take uh, all the screws out underneath.
now that we have all the screws getting removed, we're moving to some smaller screws in the front. Like we said before, there at times there can be a lot of screws holding things together. And, and to get to something like the keyboard is definitely, uh, we would consider this a lot of screws to get access to the QWERTY keyboard. The bottom comes off. Top plastic piece comes off. And now we have the QWERTY keyboard that's really just nested in there. And we want to remove the ribbon cable here. And it will slide out with the flex circuit. And now you have power that will simply pop out. And now you've successfully removed the keyboard. So this is a disassembly to remove your flat panel display or your monitor. Uh, common faults, no display video, loses video during runtime, um, or any just weird monitor uh, induced types of failures. Could be artifacts. Uh, we often see scratches on the screen, uh, maybe some locking up at times. Uh, that's typically more common associated with uh, an e-box and, and, and on that processing unit. But it does occur on the, on the monitor as well. So we're going to walk you through that. And you can see we have two slots with a small flathead. You're going to push up and pop out each side. So it's kind of a compression pull off that black, uh, I mean, pull off that back cosmetic panel, disconnect the display video, and these other connectors to the left here. And now we're gonna get it off of the arm. So you have four screws, And when you remove the screws, uh, you can see those two latches that are still on the arm. So the monitor is not going to fall off on you when you remove these four screws, but it will be loose. Now we're going to show you to get access to the external input output board. Uh, common faults, you know, no display video through there. Uh, no network connectivity, maybe some EKG failure but we're going to get into it. We gotta remove the back latch here, swivel out as usual. We're gonna get access to this panel on this side. So on this side of the machine, there's a one screw. We're gonna lead in with a flathead, pop the front open, swivels out, and now you have access to that board. We got these three screws. remove that metal shield. Then we're going to remove these connectors. So obviously you can see ethernet here, stereo jack, then display. And we got two more screws removed from the plastic. This doesn't fail very often, so you shouldn't be doing this very often. But now we're going to unmount it from that plastic piece. And now we have that nut. We loosened it with a wrench and it slides out. That's it.